Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Andrew Jensen, your friendly neighborhood realtor. And as you can probably tell from the title of this video, we're gonna be going through sort of my process for listing a home to getting it sold. So I'm gonna walk you through sort of how I work with my clients, what I usually do for the marketing, and just sort of some ins and outs of what you can expect if you are a seller that your realtor should be doing with you to make sure that your home is sold. So let's get started on this one. Okay, so the first thing that most realtors are gonna do is they're gonna take you through the CMA presentation. That's comparative market analysis. Essentially, it's just what is your home's value? And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna compare your home to a whole bunch of different homes out there that are very similar, that have sold usually within the last six months to give you an idea of the value of your home today. What I do when I'm finished my CMA presentation is I will break down exactly what I'm gonna be doing day by day as far as getting their home sold. So when am I gonna be taking the videos and the photos? When's it gonna be measured? That sort of thing. The other thing that I do during this meeting is make sure that the clients understand what kind of market they're in right now. So most clients do sort of understand it's more of a buyer's market or it's more of a seller's market. But the worst thing that you wanna do is setting sort of an expectation that oh, even though it's a buyer's market right now, that the sellers are gonna you know, always be winning and they're gonna be always doing better than any buyer situation. So making sure that like the actual market is laid out clearly and what they can expect from that, it's gonna save you so much of a headache if you are the realtor working with that client. So being aware of the market is important. And also I'll take my clients through um, a negotiation process. Let's say we figure out a listing price and then I will kind of give them an idea of like, well, we have these kinds of margins and this is what we can expect as far as offers and the way the whole counter offer process works. I take them through that whole thing so that there's no surprises later and they know what to expect. Along with breaking down the whole process and going through each one of my steps during that sort of CMA presentation, I'll also make sure that I explain to them that I actually do my own photography and my own videography. So <laughs> this is great actually. So my wife is a wedding photographer and I'll do photos and video for her weddings and things like that. And what's great about it is it saves me every single time I have a listing, I am able to take my own photos and I'm able to sort of show exactly what I want rather than hiring out some company. And they typically just sort of do a general photos. But when I do my photography, I can actually highlight specific parts of the house that are really nice. Like let's say they've redone the shower. I can completely take photos of the shower rather than just a general photo of the bathroom. And clients love this. If you're sort of thinking about getting into the photography world and you're a realtor, um, I recommend you do it. Get a nice camera, something that can also do video. Most DSLRs do video really, really nicely nowadays and you can do not only the photos, but you can even do the video walkthrough as well. So I'll do a whole video tour of my listings using the camera that I'm actually filming with right now. And it works out really, really nicely because I can take the photos, take the video, and I don't have to worry about somebody else missing any details and I can highlight exactly what I want for each listing. So that's what I do. Um, I make sure that they understand that I take the photos and the videos. And one of the requirements for listing a home is that you need to have it measured. And to be honest, measuring a home is like pulling teeth for me. I would rather not do it. I would much rather pay somebody else to do that. So even though I do my own photos and videos, I will definitely pay somebody to come and do the measuring. And most measuring companies nowadays will also provide other things. And this is one thing that I always do with my listings is I will do a 3D tour of the home. It's almost kind of like a fancy Google street view as they go through the home. And this is not sponsored whatsoever. But what I'm also looking for a lot of the times is companies that use the, the Matterport system. So it's a big square box and essentially what it does is it's doing sort of a full scan of the house. And I think that it's using like a LiDAR system to do the full scan of the house. And essentially what it does is it makes it so that you can kind of expand out into almost like a dollhouse view of the home and clients love that stuff. Clients love to see their home in this brand new way and buyers love it too. And the reason buyers love it is it not only gives them a tour of the house if they wanna do it, but it also provides them like an idea of like the distance and the direction of the house and gives them an idea of like, this is sort of like the space going into the kitchen or 
This is a little reading nook off of the, the den and things like that. So I love having that done. Um, and so I always do that with my clients is I get it not only measured, but I get essentially like the fanciest version of the 3D tour because there's lots of different ways that you can get the 3D tour of the house done. But I really like using the Matterport system. There is a struggle to actually get a good listing description up there on the MLS. Um, a lot of times what you'll see is you'll just sort of see a lackluster Here's the home, it has this many bedrooms, has this many bathrooms, and you know, maybe there was a renovation done, and it's like, well, what was special about that house? You know, you have to really stand apart. So when I talk to my clients about how I'm gonna be listing their home, one of the things that I always stress is that we are going to identify what's absolutely unique about your house, because everything has something that's unique. Even though we have so many cookie cutter listings out there, something is unique about your house. So whether it's you have a gas line and nobody else does, or sometimes you have like an upgraded kitchen that uh, stands out in the neighborhood, whatever it is, I will try to emphasize that as much as possible in the listing description. The other thing too that I always see in these listing descriptions and I really try to avoid is too much capitalization. Because if everything is in all capitalizations to emphasize it, that means nothing is emphasized. And I have literally seen listings that are just all capitals. And it's not only is it hard to read, because when we get it on the MLS, it's just this little tiny box that you have to read from. And when I see all capitals in there, I just shrug my shoulders and go, why, why did you do that? It just means that nothing is important. One of the other things that I do is I pick the day that I put up a listing strategically. So according to Redfin, what they say is that Thursdays are the best days to list a home, Thursday or Friday. It's kind of the jury's out between either one of those. So what I typically do is I will actually just kind of split the difference and I will go Thursday evening for when I do my listings. And what I've noticed is that not only does that give people enough time to set up for the weekend so that they can, you know, the other realtors can set up a home so that buyers can come and see it, but it just gives that sort of pristine sense to the listing on the weekend because a lot of people are going to want to be taking a look at it, especially right off the bat because what will happen is all the other realtors will have uh, an alert for that neighborhood that they have buyers that want to live out there. And so if your home is out there and it goes on the market, those realtors will get a, a notification and they will let their buyers know. So having it on the kind of a Thursday evening means that when they're looking at it on a Friday night or a Saturday, it's still this like shiny brand new listing, only been up for a couple of days, like a day and a half. And so that makes a big difference because that sort of freshness to it really draws people in. So I typically use Thursday afternoons to list my uh, homes. And uh, what they also notice is that homes that are listed on Thursday afternoons or Thursdays in general tend to sell more within 90 days. So you tend to sell faster, you get more people coming and taking a look at it. It's all good things. So for me, I always list Thursday afternoon. Next thing up, so now that we've got your home photographed and measured and video and the whole 3D tour done, soon as that listing goes up, so like I just said, on Thursday afternoons, we're gonna get that sign on the property. So I've already got it pre-arranged so that on that day, the sign is on the property so that when the neighbors see that, they'll say, oh my goodness, there's a new house on the market. You know, my friend has always been saying she wished she lived closer to me. Now I can tell her about this. So. The sign on the front lawn is not just to say that this is the right home to come to if you're coming to see it for a viewing or something like that, but it is a huge advertisement to the neighborhood to say, this home is now for sale, so tell your friends. So I always make sure that the sign is in the yard the day that it goes on the market. So the next big part of this is you've got the photos done, you've got the video done, you've got the measuring done, the sign is on the property, you're on the MLS, what do you do next? But what I do is I'm going to market that home everywhere I can. I'm putting it everywhere. I'm putting it on Kijiji, which is kind of our version of like Craigslist. I'm putting it on Facebook. I'm putting it on my business page. I'm putting it on the website. I'm putting it on Instagram. I'm putting it on Insta stories. I'm putting it on Instagram TV. I'm showing that video everywhere I can. Um, all the photos, I'm highlighting the listing. You can even do targeted ads on Facebook. And that's something, if you're a realtor and you're thinking about this, targeted ads on Facebook seem to work really, really well as far as drawing attention to your home. Cause you can literally target to a neighborhood or you can target to people that have literally messaged another friend on Facebook saying, you know, that specific neighborhood or uh, buying a home or something like that. You can really, really hone those, those um, Facebook ads in. 
So not just Facebook Marketplace, but you can put it on to different pages. So pages specifically for that neighborhood, like a buy and sell for that neighborhood. There are so many different ways that you can get a listing out in front of people. And uh, there's no excuse for just sort of setting it up on the MLS and then maybe doing an announcement on your Facebook page. Like there's, there's so much more you can do there. So after I have shared their listing over all of these different pages and all these different places where you can look at buy and sells, I will share those links with my clients. I'll make sure that my clients are aware of all of those and that way our clients can put them on their Facebook page and on their groups that they're a part of and that they can announce it to the world because honestly the more people chatting about this home the better. So if you're not utilizing uh, as, a, as a real estate agent if the sellers are not involved in you know actively putting that home out there you're cutting yourself short and you may end up having a listing on for a little bit longer. The biggest most overarching principle here as far as getting that listing sold is it's pretty obvious actually it's you got to list it right you got to have the right price on there for people to be attracted to it and I don't know how many times I have looked at a listing and I've even done a comparison and I've seen that the listing has been on there for 200 or 300 or 400 days and it's not selling and you look at it and it's you know $150,000 overpriced and you think of yourself like, why did you do this? And sometimes, you know, sellers are very, very attached to their home and they want to get a good investment out of it. And a lot of times what will happen is a seller purchased a home and they're using this as like a retirement, you know, the sale of that home that they've lived in for the last 40 years as a retirement. And that's great. But when they are trying to sell in a market where I'm at right now, where only one in 10 listings are actually selling, if they're doing that, if the sellers are expecting this huge return, they may be a little bit disappointed based on the timing. That doesn't mean that it can't sell. And so I'm always of the philosophy that, and I always tell my clients this too, is that every single home will sell and it can sell. It just needs to be the right price. So that's the biggest, most overarching principle here is making sure that the home that you're listing is listed at the right price. We don't do that CMA just so that we can add 80 grand to the listing price based on what the actual home value is. People are just not going to look at it. And sort of the key there too is making sure that you fall into different brackets, right? So if we've got a home that's worth just under 500,000 and you list it at like 510, what you're going to do is you're going to actually alienate or you're going to you're going to make it so that people that have a sort of a price limit at around 500, when it's at 510, you're going to be outside of their search. So making sure that you're aware of those kind of limits and the brackets that realtors will use as a cutoff point for a person's budget. Keeping those in mind when it comes to the listing price also helps too because more people will see it if you're within their bracket. Sometimes if your home is just not selling, maybe you need to sort of get a little creative about the way that you present it to people. Um, if you've ever watched Million Dollar Listing, so so you know that Ryan Serhant, he, dresses up <laughs> to sort of build the buzz about a property. He'll do like an open house and then he will dress up in all kinds of different things. Hello. Hi. Wow. Welcome to the ballerina's apartment. The things I do so an apartment. And people look at it and it's kind of funny and he's this like reputable realtor. Hi, I'm Sam Jones. Hi, Sam Jones, reincarnated from the 18th century. I was dead now, now I'm alive. But he does that to sort of sink into people's minds like remember this property remember this unit remember this listing it's not just the indoor heated lap pool Whoop. <laughs> and it really really helps and it sort of builds a little bit of a buzz so sometimes you just gotta kind of get creative think outside the box um, another option that people have actually done before and this is totally up to you guys as sellers out there whether you are comfortable doing this but with all these airbnbs and things like that out there letting potential buyers take your home for a test drive like literally like take your home and spend the weekend in it or something like that right making it so that they can try it out and see if they actually like the way the ensuite is set up or if they actually like the flow of the kitchen in the living room other people do other things too like they'll do like an auction for their house or they'll do sort of like a house lottery people do that sort of stuff a lottery on the home is kind of cool again it might be illegal depending on the province or state or wherever you might be in but it's definitely unique it's definitely thinking outside the box and if you've got a very sort of quirky home or if you've got a home that's just not selling think outside the box there are lots of different ways that you can sell your home and get creative about it 
Guys, I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, I hope this has given any realtors out there a bit of an idea of like, you know, especially if you're just starting out, an idea of what you can do to make sure a home gets sold. Um, if there's any sellers out there watching this, this gives you an idea of some of the creative ways you can sell your home or ways that you can work with your realtor to be more effective. If you have any thoughts or comments, leave them down below. I'll answer any comments that I get there and uh, leave a like. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs> I wonder if I did the whole video with this guy in it, if anybody would notice. Maybe I'll just like hide him like behind my shoulder or something like that. Put him down here, just barely peeking up.